We all know none of Unify switches come with any power redundancy, but they have a product to assist with this, which is the product I have right here in front of me. This is the Unify redundant power supply. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the device and see how it works and if it's really worth it. The price of these will set you back $399 in the US and approximately £335 in the UK. Let's have a quick look at what comes inside the box and then how you get this set up. So currently I have the UDM Pro sat on top of the device. So if I actually line them up perfectly, you can see that the device here is slightly longer in terms of what it is. So inside the box, you get a cable to connect the device together. So this is, almost, it is, looks much like an ATX connector. So you have one of these and it's quite a thick and heavy cable. So I don't think this is breaking very easily anytime soon. Also inside the box, you get yourself some screws. So as we've come to expect from Unify, you get the screws, the mounting racks and everything else you need for the device in a nice packaging, so that's there. And you have the rack ears as well to mount on the side if you're gonna rack them. So right now I'm just gonna move the UDM Pro out of the way. So I'm just gonna pop that here. And then I'm gonna show you this device just here. So if I have a look at the front, you can see we have the display that we've come to see and a gigabit ethernet cable slot, should I say. And then on the other side, it's quite a heavy device, so do keep that one in mind if you're trying to rack these. You have a power supply unit with three fans, and then you have six available slots. So as I mentioned to you earlier, this cable right here, there's one that comes inside the box. These will set you back $29 in the US and £24 in the UK. So on top of the £335 or $400 that you're gonna be spending, Keep in mind that you'd need to buy five more of these depending on how many devices you have. So what I'm gonna quickly do now is show you how to connect this all up together. So as I mentioned, I've got my UDM Pro just here. I have an ethernet cable from the UDM Pro which goes just into the front just here. And then I'm gonna pull out the two connectors at the back. So these are the two available adapters at the back that you take your sockets out of. One is out of the UDM Pro and the other is out of the redundant power supply. So the cables, as I mentioned, just unstrap this. You can see the one that goes into the bottom, which is just here. So we clip that one in. And then the one at the top is exactly the same and we go ahead and clip that one in. And it's fairly in there. So I'm using a decent amount of pressure to try and pull this out. And uh, yeah, it doesn't come out very easily. And then we just need to go ahead and pop in our kettle leads or IEC cables. So just pop them in. And you can see at the front just here, both of these devices are now powering up. So let's go ahead and give that a minute. And then what we're gonna do is hop onto the computer behind me and adopt it into the Unify setup. And just before we do go to the setup, you can see those two lights have popped on. So you can see in the little symbol here, it's off and then on. So actually all these down here have their own individual lights. So you can see which one is active. And even though they're plugged in, they might not actually be working. So you can look at it physically and most probably you can look at it on the software as well. So here we are in the Unify network controller. Um, we have the devices here. So we have the UDM Pro setup, which was already there. And we have the redundant power supply. So we go ahead and click on the power supply and adopt it. So we'll give that a minute or two while that quickly adopts. And that was fairly quick. <laughs> a lot quicker than uh, it normally is. So it's just getting it ready. So let's just give it a second. So while it's doing that, we'll run through the menu quickly. Um, you have the information uh, about the model itself, what temperature it is, how long it's been running. Um, you have some insights, so some power utilization. We haven't done anything yet, so there's I don't think there's any insights to show there just yet. And then we have the settings. So we do actually have number one plugged in, but we'll give it a chance to get it ready, get loaded, and see how that goes. Down here, we have the device name, the number of outlets. You can see there it shows it as enabled. So it's definitely plugged in. Uh, the screen, so if you ever wanna turn it off into night mode, you can choose the beginning and end. And obviously you can turn your screen off at night. And if you wanna synchronize it between the multiple devices on the rack. You can then give it a static or DHCP address, whichever you choose. And the last bit is the manage where you can restart, custom firmware upgrade download the device info, and if you wanna forget the device, you would click that just here. Now we can see that it's ready, 
And if we click on the insights, we can see it's now currently using 10 watts. Um, from the power device, if it was to switch off, it would be using that. And if we go into the settings, we can see that's enabled as well. What I'm gonna quickly do now, there's two tests I wanna run. Uh, number one is obviously just pulling the power and making sure we don't lose any ping packets. Um, I'm guessing not, otherwise the whole device system would restart again. So we'll go ahead and run a quick ping check. And at the same time, we'll see if that pulling the plug if anything else happens with it as well. And then the second test I'm gonna run is just keep the device off and I wanna plug the power supply in to see if it actually powers up the device. So if you are in a scenario where you've lost power to a certain circuit, are you able to actually set up the device or power on a device as well? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna quickly open up terminal, just quickly run a ping just here and you can see that happening. Just gonna move that to one side and on the other side I'll have a picture of me pulling the device um, during the, the time that we're doing it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this plug just here. Three, two, one. There you go. There you go. And you can see by that plug we haven't lost any pings at all. And you can see actually on here behind the screen that it's already showing that it's power delivering. So the state now is in power delivery mode. So quickly go to the settings. You can see 18, 19 seconds ago that it's gone ahead and failed over. And if I show you just one more thing, I've plugged the power back in and that is now just, an, it's gone back to an enable state. It's not delivering any power. So let's go ahead with our second test. So as I mentioned, the second test we're gonna run is seeing if we can power up a device by itself. So. I have the power cable to this device unplugged and I have it plugged out of the redundant power supply. So I'm gonna plug that back in just now and let's see if it does anything. Obviously there's no power button on this, so there's no real way to actually go ahead and press a power button or do anything. So it should just power up as soon as it plugs in, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to have done it. So it doesn't look like you can actually use this to power any specific devices as such. Um, however, if you pull the plug, if it's already powered up, you're more than, you can use the redundant power supply to fail over, that's no problem. But if you're looking to do something where you would need to power the device up, this is not the device for you. You would need to find some sort of alternate power to get it powered up. So as I mentioned earlier, these, these little things do set you back 25 pounds roughly each. So you've got to think 335 pounds for a unit plus 125 on top. So you're looking at about 460 pounds for redundant power supply for six devices. Now coming to some of the bigger brands like um, Juniper, Cisco, Aruba, those, those devices are quite expensive with the redundant power supplies. So overall, maybe to power six devices, it's not too bad at all. It's less than 100 pound a device. And um, yeah, overall, I don't think it's too bad. Now, the only thing you need to make sure is obviously if your power supply goes in the redundant power supply, then in that case, you are, you might as well just go home and call it a day because at that point, you've got nothing else left to do. So whether you're using this at home or in a small business, let me know if you're using it in anywhere at home or in a business, or if you've actually ever set one of these up before, let me know down in the comments below. The links to the products are down there also as well. And if you wanna support the channel in other ways, that's also there too. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.